Hi guys and welcome to today's video on latitude and longitude, part of the further maths course here in Australia. Now don't worry if you are not in Australia, it's fine. Latitude and longitude and the maths behind it is really universal and so stick with me. Um, my name is Darren as you can see and uh, have you been to mathsguru.com? No? Well basically head over there and uh, you will find all of these videos organised by chapters, by textbooks and with downloadable notes. I couldn't be any more helpful if I tried. Um, and if you can head over to uh, YouTube and subscribe to me that would be greatly appreciated. Never going to be rich, never going to be famous, but actually knowing the people who are watching this actually means the world to me. So thank you very much if you could do that for me. Latitude and longitude. Now, basically, we in a previous video looked at arc lengths and believe it or not, there is a wonderful practical application of arc lengths and that is this huge lump of rock we are currently spinning on because we can find distances between one point and another around the edge of circles. That's the whole point of finding arc lengths and because the Earth is pretty much circular, it's not really, it's spherical, anyway, whole new discussion, um, then it would be really important. Now you're going to say, why on earth would I want to find two positions on the face of the Earth? Well, I wrote an app a long time ago uh, that required location, so uh, it needed to know where two people were uh, with respect to each other, and it could work out the distance between the two. Now the mass behind that was actually fairly horrendous. There is a fairly disgusting formula, uh, way beyond this course, um, but actually location services, knowing where you are, how far away you are from places, Google Maps, uh, it's really, really big, 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 big money stuff. Okay, so without latitude and longitude, we also wouldn't have GPS. Now, I'm going to be honest with you, I always get these two the wrong way around. So if during the course of this video, I say latitude when I mean longitude or longitude when I mean latitude, I'll try and pick it up on editing. But for some reason, like my left hand and my right hand, if I'm pressured, I always get it wrong, right? And creating these videos, huge pressure because I need you guys to understand the work. So, first things first, what you need to know is that the Earth can be split up into lines that go horizontally and vertically around the globe. So, the lines that go across the globe, all right, or horizontally, are latitude lines. Now, again, that's a little bit weird because these here are latitude lines. So, do you see what I mean? The lines are going horizontally around the Earth. The best way I can remember this, believe it or not, is latitude has an A. And A is a cross, and that's the way that I'm trying to get my brain to recode how to remember these, otherwise I always get them the wrong way around. So these lines are really, really important, and they are relative to the equator. Now what you'll notice here is they're actually angles allocated to each of these lines, right? So 30 degrees north, 60 degrees north, 90 degrees north. So it obviously has some sort of relevance to that equator, which is zero degrees. Likewise, 30 degrees south, 60 degrees south, and 90 degrees south. So we're either moving north of the equator or we're moving south of the equator. Those are latitude. Longitude are actually lines that split the Earth into, well, segments, really, if you want to think of the previous example I used with Terry's chocolate oranges. And once again, I'm hungry. Now, what you notice is there is a prime meridian. There's something called the prime meridian. Now, that's a line that goes through Greenwich in the United Kingdom, all right? And the international uh, is really, really important. And then lines, again, are split around the Earth. Again, they're given these degrees, yes, but they're given east or west. Now, I'm going to be brutally honest. I do not know why the graphic that I got from Google has O's on it. Uh, it's got E's on one side and O's on the other. I've got no idea why. That should be east and west. So when we move west, uh, that's why we use the west. Okay, so remembering which is which, as I say, you always get these the wrong way around. Just please write it in your summary book, copy that diagram in, do something that you remember that latitude is across, longitude is up and down. Now, isn't a circle just a circle or not when Barry's been at it? Because we've got to obviously, for some reason, give these circles names. So first things first, we have great circles and we have small circles. So a great circle, is, and the equator is an example of a great circle, is any circle which contains a diameter. So a great circle could be the, uh, the equator. It could also be the prime meridian because the prime meridian cr contains a diameter. And believe it or not, there could be all sorts of these circles, but we only deal with great circles being effectively the uh, equator or the prime meridian. Then there's these small circles, which again are these lines of latitude. All right, so everything outside of the great circle is effectively a small circle because the circles are getting smaller. Random. Thanks, Barry. 
Then we get to meridians and parallels. God, again, they get to throw these stupid words in to try and confuse us all. all right, so we have a meridian of longitude. All of our longitudes are meridians. All right, and basically they are circles which pass through the north and south pole. Now I tried to find a diagram here which suggests that the north pole is here and that's the south pole somewhere down there. Now basically for our purposes, the meridian will always go this way. All right, so meridians of longitude, write it in your summary book. Just know that whenever you see the word meridian, it's talking about a longitude. And then we have parallels of latitude. Oh my goodness, again, parallels of latitude. Why can't, they, why can't they just keep them as latitude, right? So we've got small circles, parallels of latitude. No wonder my brain wants to explode at times. Again, put it in your summary book if you can. Now, how do we describe latitudes and longitudes? Don't know if you've ever, ever watched television programs. I mean, obviously you have. Who doesn't watch television nowadays? Um, but again, there's this idea that latitudes and longitudes are coordinates. Yes, and here are some examples here of latitude and longitudes. 39.913500 and minus 105.093000. Now, for some reason, latitudes and longitudes are generally given to six decimal places. I don't know why. We're not going to keep giving them to six decimal places, and you'll notice that I round them accordingly. There is no degree sign on there. We just know that these are degrees. But one of them seems to be positive, and one of them seems to be negative. Why? Well, what do you notice is missing? We said that for parallels of latitude, we had north and south, and for meridians of longitude, we had east and west. They don't do east and west, north and south. They use a plus or a minus. Where in life, when we move north, it's positive. When we move south, it's negative. When we move uh, west, it's negative. And when we move east, it is positive. So very much like axes, just the same, same, same. All right, so longitude and latitude are given as an angle relative to a fixed point on Earth. And believe it or not, that fixed point on Earth is on the equator and on the prime meridian, that line that goes through the Greenwich, uh, or the Goshen Greenwich in the United Kingdom. So what we can see here now is another diagram which I thought was absolutely freaking awesome where it's pretty much got everything you need on it. It tells you lines of longitude, lines of latitude, west longitude, east longitude, north latitude, south latitude. It's got some angles on it. It's got the North Pole and South Pole. ka -ching. Thank you very much, right? Now, we, as I've just said, can give uh, angles of uh, latitude and longitude in two different ways. One of the things you must know is it is always latitude and then longitude. And again, the second letter is an A there, the second letter is an O there, and A is before O in the alphabet. That's the best way to remember it. So here is one example, and here is another. So what you'll notice in the first example is we have the south and the east. So the first one is my latitude, which has to have either a north and a south, and then the second one is my longitude, which must have east or west. If we don't use those, we still have to keep the degree sign, but we can have positives and negatives. So I know that because that value there is positive, it means I'm moving around the globe to the west. Some important points and references and information that you need to know are as such. The equator has a latitude of zero degrees north. The North Pole is 90 degrees north and the South Pole has a latitude of 90 degrees south. The prime meridian, all right, that one that goes through the Greenwich, uh, goes to Greenwich, has longitude 0 degrees east. One thing that is vitally important, one thing that is vitally important that you must know is that the radius of the Earth is 6,400 kilometers. Huge, yeah? But it's gonna come up in questions coming up. Why? Well, let's try and relate it back to the previous video. What did we deal with? We dealt with arc lengths. How do we find arc lengths? We need to know the radius of the circle that we're dealing with. And now because we're in latitude and longitude, we need to know the radius of the Earth. We also need to know our subtended angle. Uh, how do we do that? Uh, it's coming up. So here's an example of how it's used. And I cannot say to you uh, enough times, please, please, please draw diagrams for these questions. If you draw diagrams, trust me, life becomes so much easier. Beijing in China and Perth in Australia have coordinates 40 degrees north, 116 degrees east. 32 degrees south, 116 degrees east, respectively. Calculate the shortest distance between Beijing and Perth, the nearest kilometer, given that the Earth's radius is 6,400 kilometers. Okay, here is a circle. Now, 
Remember that we have latitude, we have longitude, we have latitude, we have longitude. Now latitude are these uh, lines that go across. So we have 40 degrees north and we have 32 degrees south. And we have them on the same longitude, all right? So they're on the same longitude. So there is one point there and there is one point there. Now, because they're on that same line of longitude, I am looking for an arc length. I'm looking for this arc length here, which I'm now gonna draw as a circle, but from the side on. So what do we know here? One is, so Beijing in China. So here is Beijing and here is Perth. Here is the center of my circle. So do I know that angle there? Possibly not, but we're gonna find it. Do I know my radius? I do, it's 64,000 kilometers. How on earth am I going to find that angle there? Well, this is where life gets funky. Because what I want you to realize is that here is a line through the center. Now that is our uh, equator, and we know that that line there is zero degrees. But we've been told that Beijing in China is 40 degrees north of there. So we now know that this there is 40 degrees. And we know that Perth is 32 degrees south. So this angle here is 32 degrees. And ka -ching, we now know the angle of our subtended or our subtended angle. So drawing that slightly nicer, we have 64 there and I know that that angle there is 40 plus 32 which is 72 degrees. Can I find that? I should cocoa because I'm just going to use that my arc length is equal to the angle of the circle that I've got which is or the fraction of the circle which is 72 on 360 times now it's an arc length circumference 2 times pi times the radius of 6400 and and so firing up my cash calculator, we have 72 divided by 360. I want you to multiply that please by two times pi and times that by six, four, zero, zero. It gives me the staggering distance of 8,042 points. Now, what does it want? To the nearest kilometer, well, that's it, 8,042 kilometers. The example I've done here is fairly representative of lots of what you have to do. Draw the diagram, work out are they on the same uh, longitude, nearly did it, are they on the same longitude? If they are, look at the at, uh, latitudes, find the difference in angles, draw a diagram. Here's another example, point A has a longitude of 30 degrees west and latitude zero degrees. All right, so latitude zero degrees. Point B has longitude 90 degrees east and latitude zero degrees. Find the distance between the two points. Okay, so basically what it's now saying is, if I was to draw my sphere, what is a latitude of zero? Well, that's the equator. So here is 30 degrees west, here is 90 degrees east, and I'm going to have a circle or a, se uh, what would that be, a sector there. All right, so let's draw this properly now in a way that I actually quite like. We're trying to find the distance between here and here. I know this is 6,400. Now, again, there's an example coming up in a moment that's gonna trick you with this one because the radius is only 6,400 if, if you are dealing with great circles. If you are dealing with small circles, then there's a bit of a trick that we'll come to in just a moment. All right, so that's 6,400. We're looking for that angle there, which I now know is 90 plus 30, which is 120 degrees. Can I find the distance between those two? I should go, go. So again, we want it to the nearest kilometer. So we know that the arc length is the fraction of the circle, which is 120 divided by 360 times two times pi times 6,400. Firing up my cash calculator. Now the great news here is I can just change that 72. Uh, two, he says 120 divided by 360 times two times pi times blah, 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 gives me, and it wants it to the nearest kilometer, 13,404 kilometers. These questions are all about interpretation and being able to find out what it's talking about with reference to some of the important points. Remember, the equator is an important point, the prime meridian is an important point, um, North Pole, South Pole, all of these are important knowing where they are. So Melbourne has a latitude of 38 degrees south and longitude 145 degrees east. Okay, so here is my circle, here is my uh, equator, here is my prime meridian and so 38 degrees south and 148 
145 degrees east. So there we go. So we've now got that as 38 degrees and 145 degrees. Each of these values are going to become important. Find the distance of Melbourne to the equator. Okay, so if we're going up to the equator, we're going to find this arc length here. So in that situation, we're going to use the same longitude. And so we're going to draw my arc again. Here we go. I know it seems a bit weird. Actually, let's draw it properly, he says. So there we go. There we go. And there we go. So this is now, what did that say? That was now Melbourne. And we're going to say this is the equator. Do we know the length of that? Yes, because it's going around the same uh, let me get this right, longitude, and that's a great circle. So the same longitude, that means that's 6,400. Do I know this angle here? Well, I know the equator is zero degrees, and I know that this is 38 degrees south, and so in which case that becomes 38 degrees. Let's move this over and do my calculator. So in which case my arc length is going to be equal to 38 on 360 times 2 times pi times 6. And again, brilliantly that my calculator has something I can just change the top value to. So let's change that to 38. Hit enter. And we get the value of 4,245 kilometers. He says, hoping that it says to the nearest kilometer. It does. So it now wants me to find the distance between Melbourne and the South Pole. How am I going to do that? Well, I now want to find this distance here. So we already know that we're 38 degrees down. We know that we've got to go all the way down to 90 degrees, so I'm going to look for that difference. So now, here is Melbourne, here is the South Pole, and I am wanting to find that distance there. So Melbourne, the South Pole, how, long, how am I going to do it? Well, 90 minus 38 is going to be given by... 52 degrees. Leave my calculator on there for the moment because I'm going to use it. And so, in which case, my arc length or my distance in this situation is going to be 52 on 360 times 2 times pi times 6400. Change this value here to 72. Hit enter. Oh no, not 72. What am I doing? It was 52. Try that one again. 52 gives me the great value of 5808 kilometers. Finally, it wants to know from Melbourne to the North Pole. So let's draw a quick diagram. So here is Melbourne. And I want to go now all the way up here to the top where my North Pole is. So I now know, splitting up, there's my equator. I know that if I wanted to find that angle there is 90 degrees plus that angle there. Do we know it? Well, of course we do, because we know the equator is at zero degrees. And we know Melbourne is 38 degrees below it. And so in which case, if I do 90 plus 38, I'm going to get 128 degrees. So there's 128 degrees. And again, my arc length is going to be 128 divided by 360 times 2 times pi times 6400, which gives me, and now let's see if I can change this the right way first, 1, 2, 8, hit enter, and I get 14,298 kilometers. See the practical application of this? Awesome stuff. Now, I promise you it would get a little bit more challenging. And here we go. Now, Remember, all of the values you've done so far, or all of the calculations you've done so far, the two places have been on the same line of longitude. I'll get it right. Okay, same line of longitude. What happens if they're on the same line of latitude that's not the equator? Well, then we have to do something interesting. Just to give you a heads up on the theory, we know that the radius of the Earth around the equator, all right, so that distance from there to any point on the equator, is 6400 kilometers. If I move down here to a different circle, then this point here and this point here may well be on the same latitude, but now this radius is going to be very, very different. And again, we can only find an arc length if we know this radius here from the center of that small circle. So I'm going to have to find the center of the small circle and this radius here before I can find angles and arc lengths. All right, how's this gonna work? So Kalgoorlie, Western Australia, K, has a latitude of 31 degrees south and a longitude of 122 degrees east. So we have, what did it say? Uh, K as 31 degrees south. And so we know now that this is 31 degrees south 
and 122 degrees east. We know that Tamworth has latitude 31 degrees and 151 degrees there. All right. So looking at that line there, the only thing we know is that the angle between those two is 151 minus 122 degrees. So I now know that that angle there is 29 degrees. What I don't know is this radius. Remember, this radius here, which is that little radius there, is very different from the radius of a great circle. Okay, so how do we find this? Drawing my big circle, I'm now going to look at it side on. I know that sounds a bit weird, but here is the center of my Earth, and I know that that distance there is 6,400 kilometers. I am trying to find this distance here, because that's my new radius, if you will. Do I know the distance from here to here? Absolutely I do. It is also 6,400. Why? Because it's a radius. From here to here, and from here to here, from any center to the edge is a radius. So we know that that's 6,400. If I could find an angle, if I could find an angle here, for example, or here, then I could use uh, trig to help me find that length there. How on earth would I find an angle? Hold on a moment. They told me how low, um, what was it, uh, Kalgoorlie was from my equator. So actually zooming in just a little bit, because they told me it was 31 degrees south, I actually know, he says getting rid of this for a moment, that this angle here is 31 degrees which means that that angle there is also 31 degrees. Why? Because of alternate angles. Oh! So now, if we look at it, I can find my new radius because I've got a triangle. I know that this is 6400. I know that this one here is 31 degrees. And so I can find X. Let's call it R because it's going to be my new radius. So zooming out just a little bit. We now know that that is the adjacent and the hypotenuse, so we know the cosine of 31 degrees, cos of 31 is adjacent, which is r, divided by 6400. So we know that r is equal to uh, cosine of 31 times 6400. Fire up my cat's calculator, and we're going to do, please, the cosine of 31, must close the brackets, times 6400, which gives me a radius of 5485.87 dot 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 kilometers. Now that makes sense because 6400 is my big circle uh, or my grand circle, and so it would make sense this one was smaller. What happens now? I go back, and this seems weird because it's like a two stage calculation, but what I've now found, if you remember, is that this is 5485. Uh, it says 5485.87 dot 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 dot. So that's my new radius. So drawing it again, I know that this angle here is 29 degrees. I've got 5485.87. And so therefore, my arc length, which is going to be the distance between those two places, is going to be given by the fraction of the circle I've got, 29 on 360. Remember, it's still 29 degrees out of 360 degrees. It's still a circle. Multiply by 2 times pi times my new radius. 5485.87 dot dot dot. The reason I'm doing that is because I'm going to use my cat's calculator. So we're going to do 29 divided by 360. I'm going to multiply that by 2, multiply that by pi, and multiply that by my previous answer. Hit enter, and lo and behold, the distance is 2777 kilometers. Now there is a lot in there, and again, it's sort of um, based on the idea that you realize that these are now on the same line of latitude, and if it's not a great circle, you're gonna to have to use the calculation. Now, I'm fairly sure you could summarize somewhere that this here will always be given by the angle of, uh, now, what I what is it? It is the angle of latitude. So I'm fairly sure you could maybe summarize this and say that R is equal to the cosine of the angle of latitude times 64 100 in your summary book so that if you've got that latitude it doesn't matter if it's been low or above so long as you've got that with respect to the equator so let's do that with respect to the equator that will give you a new value of r which basically then you just use the same value or the same theory as before obviously the trick here though is remembering that your angle between is this um, latitude minus that latitude 
The best way to be able to do these questions is practice, lots and lots of practice, okay? You're gonna make mistakes, but that's fine. Make the mistakes, ask someone, get back, talk to a teacher, a friend, me, I'll do what I can to help you. Uh, but get this stuff done because it comes up in sacks left, right, and center. All right, I'm done. Thank you very much for watching. If you can, do me the favor of subscribing to my YouTube channel, heading over to mathguru.com and signing up. You've got all that stuff over there and give me a shout on TikTok or anywhere that you possibly can to let people know that these resources are here for them. Otherwise, you have a fabulous day. I look forward to seeing you in another video. Take care. Bye-bye.